All right. Hey, Commander X16 slash music tracker enthusiast. Um, this is Tim here. And if you've seen previous videos, you probably know what to expect. But uh, I've gotten the command tracker, which admittedly kind of a pretentious name, I guess, uh, since I hope there's multiple trackers for the X16. Um, but anyway, uh, my work on command trackers reached a point where it's kind of usable and I think worth giving a uh, little bit better demo than just like a quick clip like I've been doing lately. So um, first, I want to start by opening um, Schism Tracker. I don't know how to pronounce that. Impulse Tracker, or it's Impulse Tracker clone. And this is what I based, or will be basing my tracker on. I just wanted to give it a quick overview for people who haven't seen it. It's based on Scream Tracker, which were both um, PC trackers from the 90s. And um, I guess new modern trackers around, like Defle Mask, Fama Tracker, Renoise, uh, all kind of have a different interface since they're at least loosely based on, on Fast Tracker, which is very different. I chose to model mine after this interface because uh, for me, it's what I grew up on uh, back in the day, but also because it's a little simpler. And I think on something like the X16, at least as an initial like thing to do, I, I thought it would be better. So if you're interested in Impulse Tracker, uh, it's pretty neat. It's a sample-based tracker, so like mods, but it's got I have like 64 channels, <laughs> something like that. Also written in assembly uh, for DOS back in the day. Uh, my tracker looks a little bit different. Yeah. Oh, I still have it running. Is it right here? Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna run this thing. And real quick, if you notice, it took a little bit to, to start and that's actually because uh, I'm loading patterns the high memory. And if we go look at that here, it's kind of statically defined. Um, I don't have loading and saving implemented yet. In fact, I will, but that's uh, part of the reason I'm doing this video because now I'm to the point where you can sort of kind of make music and that's what I'll be working on next. Um, so you can make music, but it's fleeting because you can't you can't save it. Anyway, um, here's the order list and you get there by pressing F11, which is just like Impulse Tracker. Um, doesn't look as fancy as the order list in Impulse Tracker perhaps, but it works. And one thing I, I thought was kind of cool is you can actually scroll up and down uh, which was actually a happy accident, but I ended up liking it, so I kept it because uh, I thought it was kind of neat. Because you don't, so you don't have to page up and page down, uh, which currently aren't working. You can probably hear me click page up and page page down, and nothing happens because uh, I think that's going to be implemented, hopefully. Anyway, um, you can create patterns, and patterns are sort of created on the fly. So if you type in a number, that will make a pattern. Uh, what I actually do is when the program launches, that's why you saw that pause at the beginning. It zeroes out the bank's memory. So if you get really high up there, uh, you end up finding garbage because I'm not zeroing out all the memory right now because I'm continually like launching the program over and over and over again. And uh, I'm not, not quite sure how many patterns it's going to end up supporting right now. It supports 100, no, 255, everything but the first 00, zero pattern, which I think you can go to. <laughs> um, and there's stuff in it, so but don't because that's kernel stuff and I got to fix that. Um, and it's also a little bit weird because everything starts at zero, except patterns which start at one, which is slightly annoying. I kind of wish the developers picked a different page. I know why they did that for the kernel, uh, but it would have made things a little cleaner for me. And what I'll probably do is just do like a minus one. So when you go to pattern zero, it's really pattern, or it's really bank, or uh, page zero one in memory or something like that. For now, I'm not doing any of that. <laughs> so. Um, you can basically make a song by defining these patterns. Um, and you can define them multiple times, right? So you can jump around. And once you've done that, to go to a pattern, you just press G. And boom, that takes you to the pattern. And from here, hopefully I don't run into any bugs. I've worked on this really hard. But you can see, at least in previous videos, I have currently all the channels that I think I will ever have. There might be fewer of these than what I'm showing right there. Um, but right now I'm doing all 16 channels of the PSG, eight of the FM, and then digital, if, which is maybe wishful thinking. I'm not sure. It just depends on how much um, processing power is left over and how much space there is to do samples. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's the ultimate plan. So um, you can see the interface is loosely based on Impulse Tracker. It's formatted way different. The screen sizes and fonts and stuff are all different. But the same principle. So on the keyboard, if you've never used a tracker, I just press the Q key, and that ends up being C. The W is D, Q, W, E, e key is E, R is F. And then the number, like number two, is C sharp. And this also happens on the bottom row, too. So I just press Z, X, 
so on and so forth. And you can see the, the number right here after the uh, note is the octave. You can change the octave by doing uh, brackets. That's not actually how Impulse Tracker works, but I felt it was convenient in this case. So if I do right bracket, it goes up, left bracket, it goes down. Um, I can do, you see sharps here. That's again the row above your sort of base row. I usually use Q. Like when I did Impulse Tracker, I always used the top row and I just did uh, octaves. I think other people end up using the bottom row. So, you know, it's whatever you want to do. Uh, they're both supported. And currently to delete rows, I don't have any fancy editing yet, but you just press Shift Backspace and that'll delete them. You can see I've got like some artifacts in the interface I need to fix, which I will not do anytime soon. <laughs> I'm gonna work on that later uh, after I do like saving and you know, after having has a synth engine. We'll get to how to make sounds on this thing here in a bit, um, speaking of that. But anyway, um, the next thing would be the instrument number. And you can see when I pressed, um, well, Q in this case, it automatically put the instrument number there. I will have a like sort of interface to tell you which instrument you're using. Right now there are no instruments. It's just an arbitrary number at this point because um, I don't have the sound engine working yet um, or that concept built in. So you can really put whatever you want there. It doesn't matter, but that's what it will be. And then followed by the uh, volume column, which can go to 3F. Oh, that was a minor bug. Um, zero, zero. Not sure why it's doing that, but um, doesn't seem to affect things. Yeah, because it saved the pattern. Um, so that means since it's 3F, there's space for me to do other things. Like I'll pr I might use the volume column for also controlling the pan like you would on the on the Vera, or I might use it for some like meta effects. I haven't quite decided. In Impulse Tracker, you could use it for volume and a few simple effects. Uh, and because it's one of the reasons for that is, I forgot to mention the big difference here. You only have, um, well, basically note, instrument, volume, and then these other ones are effects. So you've got in this case the effect number and the effect, um, like, I guess, modifier. So the effect number, right now it's all hexadecimal. I don't have like nice ways of presenting this, but we'll say, I don't know, that um, 0F changes the song speed. So you would do like 0F06. 0 F, I don't know why the first one's not working here. 04, F06. So you, if you want to make like a syncopated kind of sound, you would just keep doing that over and over. And if I had effects working, which I don't, it would it would do something. So in other trackers like Duffel Mask, Fama Tracker, Renoise, um, Fast, no, actually not Fast Tracker. Um, anyway, in some of the modern trackers, you can actually define multiple effects. I'm not doing that here, um, and there's a good reason for it is that, in fact, I can pull it up. Um, I started trying to figure out how to make a sparse format, and you can, it, this is on the GitHub that I have, if you want to read through my, my thoughts here. And I think this will probably work, uh, at least for a storage format. But for a pattern editor, it became very quickly really daunting to figure out how to manage all that, because you can add notes anywhere you want on, in the pattern. And if, it was in a sparse format where you're only storing what exists. If I add something, I have to like add it in the middle and I have to move things around. And I'm just not that good at assembly <laughs> um, since it's kind of the first time I've written a rather large project with it. Um, so I opted to really keep things simple, which means I'm using a full pattern format. And I'm kind of constrained by spaces. 25 channels at, well, this information here, I'm actually currently assuming five bytes for DPCM, but I think under the cover that won't be the case. Either way, with all these channels, it's like 8,000 bytes. Conveniently, it's almost a, a page of banked memory, which is why I'm using banked memory for the patterns. Um, and there's just not more room to add more effects without having to do some level of intelligent pattern making. And I just didn't want to do that right now. So um, instead, because you can have up to like, at least currently, um, FF effects, I could use some of those for like macros. So to get around the fact that you can't have multiple effects per row, if you're modulating a bunch of stuff, um, you could maybe use a macro. And I think that's what AdLib Tracker does, um, which is kind of its own interface. And it's in some ways like kind of like Fast Tracker and in some ways like Impulse Tracker. No, that matters if you've never used any of them. So I kind of forget I said that. Um, you can see these visual artifacts because I've got um, occasional bug. You just saw it right there um, where sometimes it's not printing a letter. Um, so I'm not sure what that's about, but I'll work on that. Anyway, to actually make some songs, or just some, make some sounds here. I'm going to go to pattern one. And I don't have it where you, when you 
press the key, it makes a noise. And that's because I don't have any concept of instrument. So if I just play this, it'll just drone, which isn't very interesting. Um, so I thought that would be really distracting if you're if it's making noise while you're trying to make patterns, if there's no like turning off of the noise. Um, here you turn the off noise with note off. And in that case, you press number one for note off. And if you want to do note release, which doesn't work yet, but will, you use tilde. Um, note release, if I'm using a synth engine that has envelope support, um, or make one that has envelope support, you could you could do that to like tell the computer, play this note until I, you know, have note release and then let it let it fall off or, or what have you. Um, both concepts are implemented as far as the pattern goes. It's just up to whether or not the sound engine is gonna, engine's gonna have that. So for now, none of that exists. So if you wanna turn a note off, you literally have to turn it off. So for example, all right, and we can do like a baseline here. Oops, baseline. Um, I'm just gonna do this. Uh, like this. Unfortunately, copy pasting and some other nice tabs don't work yet, so uh, you have to forgive some repetition here. I'm just kind of guessing. And one thing you're about to see is it wraps, which is another feature. So right now it's the same pattern that wraps over and over. If you go up or down, you don't switch patterns. You always stay on pattern whatever you're on. Um, but I thought that was kind of neat because again, page up and page down don't work in the emulator. so. It's, I don't have a key map that lets you page over. I do have tab, I don't have it enabled right now, uh, but you can tab over, you just can't tab back. Because again, shift tab wasn't seemingly a valid key code that I could use, which was slightly annoying, but it is what it is. So uh, anyway, let's see what this sounds like. All right, and it's playing the next pattern. So I'm gonna zero it out. If you zero the pattern, um, it skips. So in fact, yeah, it adds a dash there. So this will just loop through pattern one. All right, and we can add, I don't know, like a little melody. And you're gonna notice this is gonna be a different sound and I'll explain why here in just a sec. Uh, let's add, no, well, let's actually, it's not add note releases and see what this sounds like as is. Yeah. And let's go and add some drums. Uh, oh, that's cool. And maybe make the drums a little bit more interesting down here. We can do like a off beat there and see what that sounds like. And let's see. This is where copying and pasting would be really nice because I want to copy that up top. But maybe we'll do a different octave. All right, let's see what that sounds like. That's not bad. Here, a little pause there, and I'm not sure if that's a bug or not, because uh, usually when it's playing the actual song, you've probably heard the Bad Apple song I've made people listen to several times. Doesn't do that, and so I'll have to maybe look into that. I think, I'm just gonna try this, see if this works. I think, if I do this, I think it should play. Yeah, let's see what this does. Oops. <laughs> oh, zero two, okay. That's also a bug. I did it again. Oh, maybe that's a, let's say zero two. And, okay. I think it's correct now. Yeah, I think 
I'm hearing a little pause, so I might have to look into that. Um, that may be because when it when it plays the song, it has to load the next pattern to display it in the uh, sort of piano roll. And I've kind of debated maybe not having that when it's actually playing the real song because there is a penalty for having to load that, and I haven't figured out how to like preload it because the actual pattern data is on the lower level of the Vera. So for folks that know how to use Vera, I did that so that I could scroll the pattern uh, without flicker because you can see here there's flicker because it's redrawing the screen every time I'm, I'm shuffling over. And that flicker would just be impossible to deal with uh, if you're trying to like rapidly draw the screen. So instead I'm just scrolling the pattern on the lower level. Um, I think there might be a penalty to doing that. I'll have to perhaps look into. Anyway, more on that later. Um, and like I said, all this is fleeting. So as soon as you exit the program, uh, it all goes away. So uh, the next thing I'll be working on is, um, you know, saving and loading of songs. Um, and I probably won't be dealing with instruments yet. Um, I have a plan for that. Oh, and actually speaking of that, um, you notice that all these three tracks were different. Um, that is because uh, one of these is a square wave, one of these is a saw, and then this is drums. And these are, like, are hard assigned to the channels. So when I load the program, I just configure the Vera on these three channels, and I don't even think three does anything. Yeah. So um, I'm going to leave it that way for a while um, so that I don't have to sort of deal with that at the moment. But I, obviously, I'll get there. Um, and the plan is to probably try to use uh, Concerto, uh, which is made by another person on the, on the forums. And it's a really cool app, so I recommend you do check it out. I reference it in my uh, threads, which I guess we can uh, open up. If you want to follow the development of uh, Command Tracker, at least with its current name, um, the best place right now is the forums. And right here. So that's where I generally post stuff, including this YouTube video. It'll be here at some point. Um, and if you're interested in the code, you can find that here. Uh, it's open source, GPLv3 right now. And so you're welcome to look at my terrible programming. <laughs> Because there's a lot of stuff that needs to be improved, um, but you know it, it does work, um, and hopefully it can kind of keep hacking away at it. Uh, even if it ends up being kind of a simple tracker, at least it's it's something. And the hope is that I would like to see uh, PSG work alongside the FM chip, the YM2151, because I think that would be a really cool sound. Because as it stands, if you just want to make music with the FM chip, you can do that with Defl Mask and just export to a VGM. Um, I know there's working code that will play it back. I don't know exactly where it is, but there's there's examples available for that. So um, that's how you can put music in your existing X16 games, but you couldn't do the PSG. Um, and I like Devil Mask, but uh, it is a fast tracker type interface, and I'm just not very good at those. So or not as good anyway. Yeah, I've used them quite some time, but um, I find the sort of keyboard layout of how Impulse Tracker works and um, how you sort of organize things a little bit better for my workflow. Um, so that's why I did this. Um, anyway, I guess I've been rambling for a while now, but hopefully that gives people a, a kind of an overview of, of how it works. Um, there's some basic help. Um, and hopefully I went through stuff that isn't outlined, like the octaves, since I don't really have good documentation up yet for all this. Um, that is planned, and I'm not sure if I'll put it in the program, just to save program space. It just depends on how much space I have left after uh, the synth engine and the instruments, figuring out how to store samples if I want to try to do sample playback, so and so forth. So um, yeah, that's it. Hopefully this wasn't too boring and you got something out of it. And uh, if not, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> you can keep track, it, keep track of it without looking at long, boring videos, like I said, on the forums. Um, and if it really takes off, I'll probably, you know, if, if it has an official name, uh, I'll probably make a domain for it and make a parking space so people can, you know, file its development over there. But one thing at a time. That's how I've been written. That's how I've written the whole thing. Is just working on like little bits and pieces uh, as I work on it, and I'll continue to do that um, until hopefully I have a functional tracker. So anyway, thanks for checking out, and uh, and that's that.